This video explains the concept of osmotic pressure and proposes a thermodynamic analysis to calculate uh, the osmotic pressure. Okay, what we have here is something that is called an osmotic pressure device, which is going to help us illustrate the concept of osmotic pressure. Uh, there's two compartments, the left and the right compartment. And in the left compartment, we have yes, uh, a pure liquid. This could be a solvent like water or ethanol or any other liquid solvent. And in the right compartment, we have a solution of the same solvent with a little bit of solute dissolved in it. Uh, initially, the solvents are, or the compartments are separated by a rigid, rigid wall that does not allow for the passage of any molecules in any direction and the compartments are filled to the same volume. Right, so then what we do next uh, to experience osm osmotic pressure is simply replace this wall by a semi-permeable membrane which only allows for the passage of solvent, but it does not allow for the passage of solute. Right, so the solvent can flow left to right or right to left, but the solute B uh, cannot. Right, so what, then you, what you then experience is, is what we call osmotic pressure. What happens is that uh, uh, solvent, pure solvent, is going to flow from the left to the right compartment. And you can see that because the levels of these uh, columns of liquid actually change. Right? You get that eventually you reach an equilibrium in which the level might be that one for the left compartment. And uh, the level goes up there for the right compartment. Okay, so, so osmotic pressure is kind of the drive that pushes the solvent from the left to the right. The question is, uh, what is the thermodynamic foundation of that uh, osmotic pressure, and is there a, simply, a, a simple expression to calculate it? All right, so as uh, always, uh, our thermodynamic analysis here in situations of equilibrium is going to be based on anal an analysis of the Gibbs energy, and in this case, the chemical potential. Right, so at equilibrium, what has to happen is that the chemical potential of that solvent A in the left and the right compartments has to be identical, right, at equilibrium. And we know that we're at equilibrium when the levels of these columns stop changing and they just equilibrate to a set value. All right, so uh, again, at equilibrium, what has to happen is that the chemical potential of uh, that A in the right compartment has to be identical to the chemical potential of solvent A in the left compartment. Okay, so in the left compartment, uh, then we only have pure uh, a substance, right? So uh, that means that that is the chemical potential uh, when pure. And in the right compartment, uh, we actually have A with a little bit of B, right? So then the chemical potential is going to be the chemical potential of A when pure plus RT, the natural log of the mole fraction of A under ideal conditions. Okay, so notice how osmotic pressure is another application of uh, chemical potentials uh, of liquids in, in solutions. And again, that illustrates how powerful that concept is. All right, but uh, uh, now we try to see uh, where the osmotic pressure comes in. Right, when we actually look at this expression, notice that that looks like an impossibility. Right, because x of a in the right compartment is never going to be 1. If you have a little bit of b, then this x of a is going to be different than 1, which means that this term is not 0. But of course, these two terms cancel. Uh, so what's the deal here? Right, There's something that is not quite right. And the thing that we're forgetting here, that we're omitting, is the fact that uh, notice that the pressure under which each solution is uh, is, is different. Right? Here you have atmospheric pressure, and here you have atmospheric pressure, then you also have a little bit of a hydrostatic pressure from that increased column of liquid on top of the solution. Right? There's a difference in height in this, uh, between those two columns, and what that means is that uh, this solution is under a little bit more of hydrostatic pressure than that one, so the pressure that those two solutions uh, are under, or is under, or uh, uh, it's not the same, right? So we actually know that there is a dependence of the molar Gibbs energy and the pressure, uh, and what that means is that the chemical potential is affected by pressure as well. Okay, so so here's what osmotic pressure is. 
Osmotic pressure is the drive of the liquid to go from the left to the right. Okay, but at equilibrium, that osmotic pressure is compensated by the hydrostatic pressure uh, of this little column of liquid that is pushing the liquid in the other, in the other direction. Right, so when the osmotic pressure equals the hydrostatic pressure, then we reach equilibrium. Okay, so let's see how that then works out. Well, we know that uh, the variation of the chemical potential with pressure, all right, that's just the molar gives energy at constant temperature, so this is isothermal, is simply the molar volume, right? So then what we can say is that, well, uh, we can separate here terms and say, well, the change to the chemical potential with pressure is just going to be the molar volume uh, times the change in pressure. But uh, when you integrate this, now you can say that the change to the chemical potential due to pressure is just the molar volume multiplied by the change in pressure. But of course, the difference in pressure there that we have is simply the osmotic pressure or the hydrostatic pressure, they're identical, which we're going to call capital pi. Okay, so again, that's the hydrostatic pressure which equals the osmotic pressure. Okay, so what that means is that in this expression, we actually have to add a term from that contribution uh, uh, of pressure to the chemical potential. So this is simply going to be the molar volume of A multiplied by the osmotic pressure. Right, so there's a term that uh, 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 takes place right there. All right, so let's see if we can then rewrite this. You have your RT natural log of the mole fraction of A has to be equal to uh, minus the uh, molar volume of A multiplied by the osmotic pressure. Okay, so uh, the osmotic pressure is a colligative property. The ultimate goal of the rest of the work in this video is to see how we can isolate here the osmotic pressure as a function of the concentration of the solute in solution. Okay, so let's see how that works out. All right, um, the first thing that we do is, is uh, plug here the uh, concentration of solute, right? So we know that this is a binary solution, so that is straightforward. That is simply uh, the natural log of one minus the mole fraction of the solute is equal to the minus molar volume of that solvent uh, multiplied by osmotic pressure. Okay, now we have seen in a video before that when uh, x sub b is a small number, all b uh, reduces to minus the mole fraction of b. Okay, again that happens when x b is a small number. So what we actually have right here is that minus rt mole fraction of b is equal to the minus molar volume of A times the osmotic pressure. Okay, so the negative signs disappear, and we start to get an expression that looks very simple. Okay, so let's try to see if we can uh, uh, make it even simpler. Uh, I'm going to re rewrite here what the molar volume of A is. It's just the volume of A divided by the number of moles of A. Okay, so let's actually uh, do this uh, simply the uh, volume of A divided by the number of moles of A multiplied by the osmotic pressure. Okay, uh, uh, well that's fine. Uh, then what we can actually do is uh, uh, try to think about uh, that mole fraction a little bit more. Okay, so that mole fraction uh, is going to be just the moles of B divided over the total moles, moles of A and moles of B. Okay, so uh, here we have a very dilute solution. That means that the number of moles of B is negligible compared to the number of moles of A. And what that means is that in this denominator, what we actually can do is simply neglect the number of moles of B with respect to A. Okay, so that is fine if this is a dilute solution. Well, that's nice because then we can actually completely uh, cancel out this A sub A with that A sub A, and the expression reduces uh, quite a bit. Okay, all right, so let's see what else can we do here. Well, we can actually divide this by uh, the volume of A right here. And then what we can say is that, well, this looks very similar to a molar concentration, right? Right, number of moles of the solute divided over the volume of the solvent. Now, this would be a true molar, molar concentration if this was number of moles of B divided over the volume of the solution. This is just the volume of the solvent. But of course, we have so little B, that's a condition for this, for this experiment to work, that a good approximation is to say that uh, uh, all of the volume uh, in that right compartment
experiment is actually A because the volume of it is going to be so small and so negligible. So this is really the volume of the solution, which means that we have a final expression for our osmotic pressure. The osmotic pressure is simply the molar concentration of B. Right? Notice that that is the molar concentration of B. And multiply it by RT. It's a, a very, very simple expression for how the osmotic pressure depends on the molar concentration. Right? It's, it's a collective property because it only depends on the amount of the solute, not on what type of solute you have. And uh, again, it's, it's just beautiful, it's simple. Okay, that's, that's very good. Now, uh, we're going to use osmotic pressure analysis as a tool to determine the molar mass of substances, right? So, so in the last few minutes of this video, we examine uh, how we can then uh, solve this or, or use this tool uh, as a technique to determine the molar mass. All right, so let's see how we do that. Well, so the question is, where is the molar mass of the uh, solvent right there, or the solute right there? Well, notice that uh, the molar concentration of B is the same thing as to say that's the moles of B divided over the volume of the solution, but that is the same thing as the mass of the solute divided over the molar mass of the solute divided over the volume. All right, so uh, then we can plug this in there. Okay, notice that uh, what you can actually do is say, well, this then is the same thing as the molar mass of B. That's the unknown. Uh, multiplied by the ratio of the mass of B over the volume. So that is, say, grams per liter or kilograms per cubic meter. That's something that we call a mass concentration, right? Mass divided over the volume of the solution, and the symbol that we use for that is simply C sub B, that is mass concentration. Okay, so then uh, uh, we can plug this here and then solve to find that uh, the molar mass of B is simply going to be the mass concentration RT divided over the osmotic pressure. Okay, so this is uh, what is called osmometry as a technique to determine um, molar mass from just measurement of the osmotic pressure. And in the homework problems, you will see examples of how this works. All right, in this video, we have seen the last colligative property, which is osmotic pressure with dynamodynamic analysis of the condition of equilibrium in an osmotic pressure device to find a very simple relationship of the osmotic pressure with the concentration of solute, which can be used uh, as a way to determine the molar mass of a solute.